G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith, I'm Darren and today's video is all about understanding curve and what is it and how you can control it. Now with most cases, 99% of us are probably going to be using Lightburn software. So we're going to run through the techniques on how you control curve and how you can get the perfect fitting jigsaw puzzle every single time but it does come with a little bit of a caveat so we're going to jump in and discuss that and you need to weigh it up yourself whether it's something you want to do. So what is Kerf? This is a very simple explanation of what Kerf is all about and just imagine that this is the piece of timber that we're chucking under the laser and the little dot that you can see on top of there that's moving around that is the size of our laser uh, beam that's being fired off as we as we cut through this material. And so what's actually happening is once that laser starts going through, it's vaporizing the wood and just removing it all together. And imagine if this was a saw, then you'd be seeing all sorts of sawdust coming out of there. But with a laser, you're going to be seeing smoke because it's actually vaporizing the timber. And that cuts all the way through. And let's jump in a little bit closer there so we can see that one. So the distance between here and here is actually what we refer to as the curve. And uh, so in light burn, we're able to compensate for the material that is being removed. And uh, we'll show you that as we get into the example. But that's in a nutshell, that is exactly what Kerf is all about. And depending on your laser, you may actually have a laser, let's say, your a co2 laser sometimes they're a little bit bigger and uh, they would be removing more material than say a diode laser but not necessarily it just really depends on the type of laser that you've got but uh, that's that's a very simple explanation and hopefully that makes sense so the first step in the process is to create the puzzle pieces and i have covered that in a previous video but we'll run through it quickly as to how i've been able to produce that one and I'm using a program called Image R. And uh, Image R is a fantastic tool. And uh, it's got a whole bunch of different tools that you can use, plus as well as image uh, manipulation and all that sort of stuff and processing, getting them ready for engraving and all that sort of stuff. So definitely I'll pop the links down below uh, to the website there as to, um, to for you to check it out. They do have a 30-day free trial as well, which is pretty awesome. So the first thing you got here is the uh, the seed, which is just mixing up the different types of patterns that you can use. You can just find one that you like, and and you away you go. The tab size just adjust the um, the circular bits. I actually quite like them; quite big. It uh, gives me that sort of real sort of traditional look as uh, with puzzles. Angle just creates the random angle. Uh, you can have them really square, or you can just offset them a little bit. Doesn't really matter. The uh, won't worry about the corner radius because that only affects the corner radius here, and uh, and here you can just set the number of pieces. So in the purpose for the for the purpose of this example, we are doing just a three by three, and I've sized that at one hundred by one hundred millimeters. Once I've got the um, the dimensions and everything the way that I want them, I can just download that one, and uh, that will save that to a uh, SVG file. And I've already done that previously, so I've got that 3x3 three three there. Okay, so we're going to jump into Adobe Illustrator and have a look at how we create these separate pieces because currently this is just a series of lines. It's not actually individual pieces, but we'll jump into Adobe Illustrator and quickly show you how that's done. Okay, so we have that SVG file sitting here in Adobe Illustrator and I'm not going to go into detail about this one because I have covered it previously, but to create these into individual pieces, there's a couple of steps. I just need to select all of them there and under object, I go to compound path and make that into a compound path. Now I, that I have that as a compound path, I need to basically cut these into pieces or divide them along those lines and you can do that under the Pathfinder tool. And if I have a look under here, that has a function called divide. If I click on divide, it's now divided those into nine different pieces. And I'll just select all of those so as you can see those. For some reason, it takes away the, uh, the stroke, but we'll give that another stroke there. Okay. Try that one more time. Okay. And I can now just ungroup those. And if I move that one, 
I can see now that I have individual pieces and that's exactly what we need to uh, convert this into uh, Lightburn to cut those into separate pieces. So let's jump into Lightburn and have a look at how we process that. Okay, so here we are in Lightburn and we have the two files. This is the one that is not separated and it's still in fact the line. So if you can have a look here, they're all just individual cut lines and uh, that will just give us our standard uh, jigsaw puzzle with the uh, wider curve and we'll run through the example. I'll actually show you what that looks like after this one. And uh, so, and then this one over here is showing the individual pieces. So I can actually pull those pieces apart and they're going to be the individual cut lines that we're going to be doing. So all, all you do is just line them up basically and uh, move them so they're, they're not touching each other. And then once we've done that, we just need to go through the settings and we'll show exactly where you can adjust that kerf offset. And let's have a look here. You could probably get those a little bit closer, but, uh, you know, because it does. It, it's going to take up a little bit more material, but anyway. Okay, so we've moved everything there to uh, so that they're not touching each other. And that's important. So as you get a nice sort of clean cut and, you know, you'd probably muck around a little bit more and get these a little bit closer if you wanted to because uh, that one can move a bit closer. And same with that one. So as you're not wasting so much material, and move that a little bit closer. Once we're happy with that one, we are going to make sure that the double click on the settings there and that's set to 0.1 millimeter of a kerf offset and uh, that will be fine. I'm just going to duplicate that, which is command D and I'm going to chuck that on a different layer and we're going to move that one out of the way so you can see the green one there. And we're going to double click on that one and we're going to do that at a 0 0.05 millimeter curve offset and uh, and we'll see what that gives us. And that's as simple as it is. So uh, we've got the, the, the straight cut and you can see it's using far less material. And these are the types of things that you need to weigh up as to whether or not it's a viable product for you to actually separate these and the extra time that it takes and there is a bit of a process involved in uh, making an image work with that as well and I can cover that in another video um, if you if you're interested just let me know in the comments but uh, that's ready to go onto the laser and we'll get those cut out and we'll have a look at them and um, there will be some different materials because I don't have enough material to cut these onto one sheet so there's going to be a couple of sheets involved in this one alrighty let's take a look at those and see how they come out okay so here we are we have some examples running left to right just like the uh the thumbnail for the video. I hope you liked that one. I thought that was a creative little outlet for me. Uh, something that I put together with AI, which is uh, Mid Journey, which is possibly another video. If anyone's interested, let me know in the comments. Happy to run through the process of how you can create artwork with Mid Journey yourself. But left to right here, we have got the uh, first example, which is the just a direct cut. So we've got that design yeah, as we showed in Lightburn, and we've just gone through and cut those lines and cut it out. And so as you can see there, as I move that around, you can see that it's got some space in amongst it. And that's the curve that we were talking about. So that's, uh, you know, it's roughly about 0.1 of a millimetre. But um, it gives you that sort of uh, loosey-goosey fit. And if I was to pick that up, this one is just going to fall to bits there. It's not going to hold together. And so depending on the type of puzzle that you're doing and the, and the client that you're offering it to, something like this you may want to improve on. But there is a way around that, I guess, is that you can create a base for it so that a base that has a border around it that that fits within and then that's going to hold it together quite nicely. So that's another option in, in if that's the way that you're wanting to go. The other end, using the kerf offset like we talked about, this is using a 0.1 mil of a kerf offset and that's in an outward direction. And essentially what that is doing, as we discussed in Lightburn, is it's eliminating the, uh, the wastage that you might expect to get from the laser vaporising the wood. And now 
this is going to the other extreme, I guess, is in that if this is not something that I'd want to offer as a jigsaw puzzle to my clients because once they get it together, well, to actually get it together, they're probably going to need a hammer because the joints are so tight, it doesn't really sort of make a lot of sense for a jigsaw puzzle. But where it does make a lot of sense, and this is something that you might want to consider for some other creative projects, is that having that kerf offset, I use the kerf offset when I'm making boxes and uh, finger jointed boxes, in fact, that I can make them using the kerf offset and not actually require any glue to hold that box together. And it's a really neat finish, uh, neat finishing box. And I do make boxes for my coasters that um, I do as well, the slate coasters, and they look really cool. And so I'm happy to do a uh, video on that one if you want to let me know in the comments below if that's something that you're interested in seeing and how we make those presentation boxes for the coasters, which is just a nice little sort of uh, value add to uh, if you're doing coasters, engraving coasters for clients. Um, if you're just putting them in a cardboard box, you can up that uh, presentation value and a value add situation by creating a box itself. Yes, it does add a bit more work, but it's a, you can personalize that box as well, which is another great thing. So for jigsaws, probably not. That's a little bit too hard. Where another a great possibility or product option for this sort of stuff is doing product inlay. So if you're doing some signage, for example, you might want to do a and have a light colored background and then do a dark colored lettering or logo or something like that in, say, walnut or, or some, uh, another dark timber cherry or whatever the case may be. And you can use that kerf offset to get a really tight finish that you might expect to see on a CNC router or something like that. So uh, something, you know, those sorts of projects are really cool to, to be able to do with your diode laser or CO2 laser if you're using a CO2 to get a really polished finish. Another one that I've seen quite a bit of is jewellery using the same techniques where uh, they might be making them out of different coloured acrylics. And again, that eliminates the need for gluing and it gives you a really neat finished product. But when it comes to jigsaws, maybe not the best outcome. So this is the uh, using a kerf offset of 0.05, which is only half of the uh, kerf offset we used in this example on the right. And you can see there that there is a little bit more uh, of a tolerance uh, for you know, movement, but it still holds together. So I can actually hold that and it's still holding there together quite nicely, much, much better than the, uh, just the straight cut uh, like we discussed here. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, there is a bit of a caveat when it comes to this process, and I sort of touched on it when we went over it in Lightburn, in that if you're wanting to do a, um, say you're printing out an image that you're then gluing uh, or adhering to that wood, there is a bit of a detailed process involved in that. And I have worked it out how I can actually do it, but it's, I didn't necessarily want to include it in this particular um, video because it was just, you know, it was going to be too long. But um, if you want me to do a video on that, I'm happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments. Um, it does involve Adobe Illustrator and a couple of techniques there. But, uh, you know, if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, I'm not sure what other programs you'd be able to do do it in um, you know I think there is a potential to do it in light burn with the um, uh, cut shapes um, but it's I've had a bit of a go at that and I think I need to do um, do a bit more research on that one but um, that's that's a, a good outcome and a, and you just have to weigh up whether or not you know the the extra time that you need to put into that process to create this type of uh, product whether it's something that is worthwhile for you so that covers the three examples there where there's no kerf offset, a uh, really tight uh, kerf offset with the 0.1, uh, which matches the, uh, the width of the laser beam that I'm cutting with, generally speaking. And uh, you would need to do your own testing with that one uh, with your own laser. And you can make those, those adjustments to see which gives you the best fit. There are some tests to do where you can cut a bunch of uh, pieces and then measure the difference and then divide by the number of cuts and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, just look at your manufacturer's uh, website in relation to the size of the beam and just use that as a starting point and adjust from there whether you need to have more offset or less offset to get that perfect fit that you're looking for. 
So hopefully that makes sense and uh, you now have a much better understanding of how you can use Kerf, um, the Kerf offset to, uh, to, you know, refine the type of finish that you're getting on your projects. And, and again, you know, the, the time that it takes to create this, uh, this perfect fitting jigsaw like I was talking about, that's something that you need to weigh up. It's, it really does, um, if, if you think about the traditional process of creating jigsaws, they spend a whole heap of time creating these metal knives that are, are then forced through and, and cut through the cardboard. Um, but the, I guess the offset there being that they are producing a large number of those. So it makes the time investment worthwhile. So I guess that's something that you need to weigh up. If if the time investment that you are putting into creating that uh, perfect fit puzzle, if that's going to be a something that you're going to be able to sell en masse. And if it is, then it may be worth doing. And, and maybe that's what separates you from the competition is that you have a much... Uh, a much more refined finished pro uh, product and uh, that could be something that uh, sets you apart and and provides value even though you'd be charging more you would need to charge more because of the additional time you know people may see that as as a, a a good value proposition so that's something that you need to work out okay so we'll uh, wrap it up there and uh, if you've got any questions pop them down below in the comments i'm happy to help wherever i can how did you go with that? Make sense? I hope so. And uh, hopefully you've got a much better understanding on how you can control Kerf and the types of different applications you could be using to have that Kerf offset to get those perfect fitting pieces every single time. It doesn't have to be a jigsaw. It can be jewelry. It can be a whole bunch of different things or signage and all that sort of stuff where you can start to be a bit more creative with the work that you're producing and get some fantastic outcomes. Anyway, until the next video, be creative and stay grateful. Bye for now.